This is the April 1st meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, we are being videoed by the Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and the public later on. First item on the agenda, minutes for the um, March 25th meeting. Has everybody reviewed and yeah. the minutes? They look great. Okay. Any additions or amendments? No? no. Okay. No. We'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for March second. 25th. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay. Next item, we have uh, three um, warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $63,636, payroll warrant for $106,408, and a payroll deduction warrant of $26,901. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil? Yeah, uh, several uh, union negotiating meetings, which, as some predicted in this room, went nowhere. <sighs> and I have no further information than I did a week ago today. Um, nonetheless, thank you all for your one-week delay in the salary recommendations, although it proved pointless and useless, as some predicted. Um, and uh, uh, did have a telephone conference with members of the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools was finally put in contact with a consultant who's part of their lobbying shop to get a specific statutory understanding of the increase in our frontier regional assessment, um, specifically how the, front, how the foundation budget calculations worked. Um, I have a very wonk wonky uh, uh, submission from them, a report from them, prepared at my request, although they did confuse Frontier with Pioneer. Uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, it filled in some blanks in my understanding, although the ability to communicate that to a town meeting or to a, is, wow, you gotta be a master communicator to be able to, there's, that stuff there's, only, there's only three people in the administration that know how that. Oh that my goodness! I, I think the uh, the takeaway for me was, and and, and yes, yes. Phil, Phil uh, forwarded me the email, is that uh, the the level of income in the town is factored in. Yeah. But the level of income has and it's factored in as a function of the town's ability to pay. Whereas the town's ability to pay may be constrained by the property values and proposition two and a half, there are no local revenues from local income. We don't have a local income tax in Massachusetts, um, as in Ohio and perhaps other states, but um, or at least they used to. Uh, so it does seem uh, unfortunate that towns with modest budgets, but that may have higher than average income earners would be taxed more if that's not reflected in the property values. So it, it, it doesn't seem to make sense, that part of the equation. Um, yeah. But you're convinced that it was correct. It that is. Somebody did make a mistake entering that, that data. This is the sad and unfortunate truth. Um, yes. Uh, and I, I suppose I'll send that all around if you want to really bury yourself in some very wonky statutory uh, interpretations. But wow. Um, and the, 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 the recommendation for future, you know, my, my big thing is what can we do in the future to keep this from happening again? Because this caught me so much out of the blue. And, uh, you know, my fingerprints were all over the budget. I, you know, I thought this was going to be a great year, and to have this happen. And um, basically, their recommendation is for another commission to be formed to look at it and to adjust the statutory ratios. Mm -hmm. And if it can just go down one percent from a forty-nine, uh, from a fifty-nine forty-one split to a fifty-eight forty-two split, 
It would save, it would cost the states 36 million, but it would give the towns such as ours so much relief. Um, so the chances of that happening, of course, are somewhere between slim and none. Um, but that is what was stated as our path to uh, to get out of something like this, where we get these hundred thousand dollar bills at the uh, at, at a budget cycle. Just well, what you said earlier was every year one of the towns gets hit like this, and this year it was our turn. And it was, it, and but now you're not. Nobody ever got hit in this manner before. Um, and we will next year. Um, and the year I, after, and the year after. It, it, it's not sustainable. We can't do. It. If that's the case, we're. We may not have the percentage rise that that's we had thing. this year because we've had this big percentage rise now. So we're we're now theoretically level in terms of the funding formula with the other towns. Yeah. Um, yeah. But every year, Conway but may be absorbing a significant portion of. All right, we're, we're, we're on we're on meetings. Yeah, yeah um, next meeting. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, also also, also the uh, find, uh, the highway facility committee meeting um, of today to work on the language for the warrant and to discuss general highway facility goings ons. And uh, once again, I would just like to report my uh, satisfaction with the processes that they are developing and my belief that they're really on to something here. Good. So. Good. Yeah. Robert? Uh, so at a conservation commission meeting, we did the, the big thing that we talked with, with NEXAMP about the solar facility that's being worked on for Southern Conway. And I, I think we've reached a, an agreement with them. They're going to come back to us with some new drawings. But the interesting thing that we may have to deal with at some point is whether we want to pass um, something uh, um, that will say, how our conservation commission is going to enforce the border areas around wetlands. Because right now we don't have anything, any formal document, and so a developer like Nexam comes in and they assume that we're going to be very lax because that's what they would like us to be. And we may try to say, no, but we have a policy that we do it this way. But well, you said there's an established history of decisions within the Conservation Commission of being relatively strict. Yeah, but there's no formal way for them other than a way to ask, they could ask us. They could say, what do you guys normally do? But we don't have anything that we passed the town meeting to enforce. No, so. you do have the law, which... Yeah. And the law says it's at our discretion. Right. And so then, then it's only history. And well, I, I, the, the, the commission could, could pass something internally, certainly. Yeah, but this, uh, well, maybe that's not anything I've, that we've discussed. Uh, I, I think I think this board would want a recommendation by the Conservation Commission sure. before before moving forward. Absolutely. Of course. Oh no, of course. Um, but but we, we if we had so if we had something that was a little more formal, then then they would not come to us with their hopes and do a lot of work designing something and then you know, us having to sit down with them and say no and having them start over again. It sounds as though they so. came with some assumptions that were unwarranted and early communication is always good in a, any yes. kind of a deal like this. Anyway, I, I'll have something more to add to that later on. Okay, any others? No. no. Okay. I didn't have any meetings last what? week. What? Way to go. No meetings. You're slacking off. No, it's just that we, we did have a Hampshire. County Selectman Association suffer that got canceled. So it was not in here. <laughs> okay, I don't see any uh, members of the public here, so I guess there's no public comments. Old business, we have uh, town meeting and budget business. Fiscal year 2020 budget review and revisions. Tom? Yeah, I give you the, uh, the large print version of the uh, Excel yeah. sheet um, after hearing your cry, and uh, there's really only, the, 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 the two items that changed from an earlier item are, are now pretty old as well. They're the, uh, the, the mowing allowance for the open space committee that made the uh, 170 series rise uh, to the level it did. And then there's, can I? That, I'm sorry? Um, so we'll, 
I'm just looking for that. I see. So what's the what's the difference? That, that, that's that's the highlighted. It used to be. It, it only it, it didn't go up nearly uh, five thousand dollars before it, it went up like a thousand dollars or something. So what is it what is it costing to mow the lawn to mow the field? Oh, it's ah, that was after I put the budget out. <laughs> um, I think they're they're allowing three thousand dollars or something. I, I don't think they're expecting that it's going to cost that much, but what they're talking about is weekly mowing over the whole, so, you know, from from spring through fall. Yeah, I don't agree to that. So, I don't know. Do we would we vote on that specifically, or is that just we, part we of have not yet voted on Article Two? Um, so this is the Open Space Committee recommending we mow it like a park. Well, the uh, perimeter. Yeah, just the perimeter. Mm -hmm. So that was their request. Um, That's way too much mowing. It probably won't cost that much. We don't know how much it will cost because we haven't gotten. Uh, Ron may actually have word tonight from the uh, from the mowing bids, but I don't think they've gone out to bid yet. Um, he's been, of course, taken up with muddy roads mm. and a garage. Um, yeah, we won't know until we get the contract back exactly how much it is. So we settled on a not to exceed figure. And again, there are many things in this budget that are not going to cost as much as the dollar amount that's there. The reason we do that is conservative budgeting, that we don't want to budget too little and have to come back to town meeting, a special town meeting, for additional funding. It turns into free cash next year, and relative to the hundreds of thousands of dollars we get in free cash, a thousand or two is not all that significant. Uh, the other item that, that changed since earlier versions of this was the fire department uh, going up, because we are now, as our employee handbook has stated for several years, uh, paying for training. Uh, however, they have not submitted for that before. They will start submitting for that uh, in July. So that is now included in in this budget. And what that means is uh, down on the bottom line, the percent rise of last year to this year, if the Finance Committee and Select Board recommended 2.5% general pay raise, uh, would be 3.17%. Uh, down considerably from the past two years, 4.7 or 4.8 percent mm -hmm. rise. Yeah. Okay. So what uh, in the grammar school stuff, the capital stuff for the grammar school? Well, um, on this actually, uh, under the uh, under the warrant articles section of the uh, spreadsheet, I still have the 25,000 for the capital expenses. I've reduced that in the warrant to 23,000 based on the upper figure that I heard you give last week. Uh, I know they're submitting the grant request. I don't know exactly how much it's for, but I think they had a couple of items. Right. And um, I, do have I didn't know what the total was, but I just put 23,000 in the warrant for now. Uh, I have not changed that here, but since it's coming from stabilization, since all these things are not raised and appropriate, it doesn't make a lot of difference uh, Oops, sorry. in terms of the, uh, it doesn't make any difference in terms of the, the tax rate. So I, I do have an email from the principal um, and the superintendent. Um, please tell Tom we will not be looking for anything for capital expenses, FY20, it's going to be grant funded. It's going to be grant funded. I like their confidence. That's the request. This is, for, this is from the grammar school? It is. Well, I'm... We should accept it. Good. Very interested. Um, I'm happy to take it out. But, you know, it's coming from their own capital stabilization. Correct. Anyway. Correct. Just so if they don't one, use one, it... One account into the other. If they don't use it, 
it well, stays there. This was so part of why the thing. wouldn't they Be want the guarantee that they would have the money? Um, uh, they wouldn't have sent this out if they weren't really confident that this was taking place. I don't know the exact specific. I'll find out next Thursday, Thursday the 4th. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, my, my more general point is it never hurts to have something in if it's coming from some source of money that, you know, if it doesn't get spent, it's it leaves the town in no worse shape than it was and, before. And part of the... the Part of the thing that's going, you know, the, the grammar school committee planned to, for the capital fund to get to a certain point, which has been achieved. And it, it was based on what the maximum cost, sudden cost could be for boiler failures, et cetera, et cetera. And does that mean that they also don't want us to put any extra money into capital stabilization? It does. It does. Because, boom! I like that. That gives the town twenty five thousand more in free cash. And and <laughs> and and if you you recall, part of the reason why the why um, uh, part of the argument in favor of the track uh, the the building renovation thing was we can start putting money into that because the grammar school capital fund has been you know we planned it this way over years. To, the grammar school capital fund has been built up to where we want it to be, um, and. If they were taking out, then we wanted to put back in. But if they're not taking out, then uh, it brings our rollover up to ninety-one thousand dollars. What's that? What's a That's how much we're rolling over to next year in free cash. That's pretty healthy. That's good. We we, we want a good rollover. It functions as a as a as a kind of a reserve fund that for town meeting, as opposed to the reserve fund that the finance committee has for emergencies and unforeseen events that's that's smaller it's forty thousand dollars this this functions free cash functions as a reserve fund for larger uh, so what number is the, the capital article, article four in? article four and article five so I'll make sure that the school committee votes on it properly on Thursday yeah um, but uh, yes yeah, that's, that would, that that's would where we're headed is to take both of those out so. yeah and and of course the reason it was there was if they had yep. not gotten the grant and had to spend the money, then this would have replenished that money. Because I did understand that they had reached their two hundred and fifty thousand dollar thing for target. Yep, yep. I should say. Okay. Uh, anything that will see. be goodwill. <laughs> oh yeah, the well, that, highway you committee. Know, we planned it that way. Yeah. Uh, or representatives from the highway committee should be in at six thirty uh, with the finance committee to go over there. There are uh, final recommendations for Article 7 and 8. Um, I have not amended that on this sheet because all of that money is slated to come from garage stabilization. So whatever it is, it is. It doesn't affect any bottom lines. I'm not tracking the, the stabilization totals on this particular sheet. So um, that's, uh, that's why that's still 196 up there at the top. Um, I made a few uh, a few word changes in the warrant that you have before you. I also have the uh, finance committee recommendations as I received them. Uh, uh, some of them, uh, notably articles three, five, seven, and eight, are awaiting finance committee recommendations. So um, we should make sure that we get there um, and, the, and the Board of Selectmen also has to well no because we, we've gotten rid of four and five so uh, we don't need to worry about article five that means that the select board just needs to rec uh, recommend article 27 uh, that's the um, hiring of consultants. That's the one that Phil requested clearer language on, and I believe I've been able to decide that. I would concur with that. So, Phil, would you and flip on that other? Um, so, all that said, I think oh, the, um, I think the board could vote now on a recommendation on Article 27, which was requested by the planning board to formally adopt the sections of the Mass General Law that allow them to get fees from applicants for consultants to review the applications or any 
permitting or licensing body to get money from applicants in order to pay for the costs of reviewing the application. Two, two questions about this. Um, does this apply to CONCOM as well? It would. I think they, they already have their own system set up. And they may have it set up under these. We, we could not find where the town had adopted these particular sections. The CONCOM sections are different, and I actually didn't check that to see whether it is, but they are already doing it, and the accountant's happy with it. So I think we're in the clear on the CONCOM. All right, question two. Does this apply to town uh, governmental entities or town committees? This is meant, uh, I think it's just for um, permitting or licensing bodies. Yeah, uh, so, so any obligation let me give you, let me give you my specific as a condition of a license permit or other approval or authorization for the planning board, zoning board of appeals, board of select. So can we carve out an exception um, if the town if the town is an applicant? Does the town have to pay? An, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Can we do, because for instance the highway facility, con, if the highway facility just uh, needs concom's approval on wetlands, whatever. Yeah, they, they they have a policy not to charge the town. Are you but, sure? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that would, that would just be silly. This right. is well, one. Okay, those are my two questions. I just think that yeah. um, if it states that clearly in the thing, it's even better than informal policies or whatever. But, um, Good. Which article is this we're talking about? 27. 27. Okay. Yeah. So we can vote a recommendation on it? Uh, yeah, we, 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 we need one. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve Article 27. Can I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Aye. Aye. All in favor? Yes. So 3 0. Thank you. So that wraps up the select board recommendations. Right. Leaving at this point um, three to come from the Finance Committee on Articles 3 and the former 7 and 8, the highway articles. So the, um, the Finance Committee wrote about the... Um, Their, their question on Article 3, which is the frontier borrowing, was... Uh, Should they come in if we're going to talk about them? Or is that no, I'm, I'm just... I'm just okay. I mean, we'll, we'll go over it. Good. Um, yeah, it was just informative. I did forward this to everybody already anyway. Uh, uh, their position was to vote when the final budget comes in and not vote on estimates. And I replied to that and said, we actually never have a final figure for borrowing until we go out to bid and we get the most favorable interest rate we can from a bank. Um, so uh, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, if. We'd have to call a special town meeting if that came through. And I, I hope that uh, Alan understands by now um, about the nature of borrowing and that this figure did come from Frontier. This is the figure. And so this represents their conservative estimate. The same way when we put out the estimates for borrowing for the highway garage, we used a very conservative estimate. We probably could have gotten half, less than half of the interest rate we calculated at that. Um, however, we were advised by our financial advisor that if we use the upper limit, we would be safe in case anything happened between the time we went out to borrow and the time the bids came in, you know, interest rates can change mm -hmm. quickly. So, um, 
I don't really know what to do with that. Um, also for, for seven and eight, they asked to know about funding sources, and I'm confused about that because that's been on this on this Excel sheet that they've they, that we've all had for for quite some time. The garage money is coming from garage stabilization, and I, I did make that clear in an answer to Alan as well. Um, so just on on the so, so those were those were some of the on the frontier on the Article Three thing. Um, Thursday is the final vote, and. Uh, for those that don't know, the reason that the vote is coming so late is um, uh, the your regional school district has independent uh, debt issuing authority. Um, and the way that that works is that if the regional school district votes to incur debt, the towns have 45 days to, uh, to either call a town meeting or the board of selectmen to disagree with that. If no action is taken, the debt goes on the books. Mm -hmm. So the, this was done the reason that it's scheduled so late is so that within that 45-day clock, all four of the towns have their annual town meeting and nobody right. needs to do anything special about it. Yeah. Um, and and uh, uh, so this Thursday is is when this vote's taking place. The, the consultant, our, uh, Furcog, Joe, Marque, what, Mar Marchese. Marchese is going to be there. So if there's any additional information, um, that's required or helpful, I can get it from him. I don't know if there anything would satisfy. Well, again, it is, um, I build flexibility into the budget schedule and the town meeting schedule as well. If we had to delay signing the warrant for a week, it would be possible to do that. All right. Um, I don't see that this question, the question of a final budget, um, I don't know whether that refers to the final vote or whether it refers to asking for a you know, a, a number that's set in stone. So do you think this number is going to change because of the school no. committee vote? No, no. I mean, I, I don't it, think it is. No. no, but it's not, it hasn't been a, yeah. a whatever, it's not, it's still. It, it hasn't been voted for, I mean, it hasn't changed for months. Right, right. Um, perhaps they could vote, um, you know, that if the number is the same after Thursday's meeting, they can be counted as, as being in favor of the of the article, and then they wouldn't have to meet again, you know, before the select board meeting uh, in a week. Um, so, and, and then just just pointing out that they were also um, they had no recommendation on a number of the uh, highway equipment um, articles, and they opposed the design for the town hall lift and um, article, well let me just talk about that for a second. Um, something that I have not been uh, public about is that I do intend to apply for a grant for that lift. It's a 60% grant. Um, it's a competitive grant. I don't have any idea how likely we are to get it. So again, it's coming from free cash. If we don't need to spend it, we roll it over. If we do need to spend it, it's there. Now, if we pass article, the article for a, a grant um, fund. So 19 in here? 16. Uh, 16. Um, currently 16. Um, oh, I have the extra money could come from there as well. Um, if not, it would have to come from this article. So, so there's a lot of ifs here. And my intention was to get this thing moving. Yes. It's been a long time since I've been trying to work on various phases of renovating the town hall, and I finally figured out doing the phases is a good way to do it, and doing the lift is the first thing to do. So that's what I'm trying to move forward. 
and I, I'm just trying to like lock down the possibility of moving forward with it. So that's why that's there. If 16 passes, we can pass over 19. If, but well, I, I'd still prefer not to because I still don't know whether or not we get the right. Yeah, we, we, we get the grant. Yeah. So that if we if we pass 19, could you use some of that for the grant or yes? Oh, absolutely. Not. Yeah, but it would only be 40 percent. Yeah. Can you come up? With, can you come up with a specific, more specific number for 19s instead of the 15,000? I mean, that just seems for just design of an elevator. That just seems like a lot. Well, if it were an elevator, it would be 30,000. 10 percent of the construction cost could be eight to 10 percent of the construction cost, but I like to be conservative. Um, the lift is not going to be more than 150,000. It may be around 100,000. The lift itself is going to be at least 80,000. Um, so the construction around it, you know, is, is really what we're talking about. And I, I don't know. Um, I'm basing it all on um, the basic cost of the lift and then putting in the shaft, constructing the shaft, which is, I'm told, not that huge a deal. It, it needs to be put in and it needs to be put in right, but it's not a, it's not a huge construction project. It's, it's substantial. You're altering the, you gotta, you got to drill through the floor, you know, it's a concrete floor, you got to get through that. But that's, that's the... Um, 15 represents your upper limit. Yeah. And then we're talking about a grant besides that. Which very well, if we get a grant, if it's 15, we get a grant for 60 percent. We're, we're talking about a nine thousand dollar grant, so we're only talking about spending six thousand dollars. Yeah. So, okay, this shouldn't be that big a deal. And you know, whatever I don't use goes back to free cash. Rolls yeah. over to next year. We're all we're better set next year. It's not like I'm raising, trying to raise an appropriate the money. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fairly allergic to owning an elevator. <laughs> I really am, just from hard, hard experience. Um, they cost 80 to 90 to get fixed. They break at the drop of a hat. Yeah, and, and I do know that, that elevators are, elevators and lifts have different problems. Um, they can have all sorts, the one, the one in Northfield was insane. It needed to be fixed every nine months. Even the one in our little library, that's the, by far their biggest expense on their budget every year, is the annual inspection, which is 10 grand. That should that's, not be 10 grand. It's because there's a special... It should, should be three max. There's like a special ancient one that requires a special, whatever, it's the oldest one in the state. It was three in Northfield, so... All right, we have... Alan, are you expecting... And that was Yeah, he's next door, should I grab him? Oh, he is. He, he oh, yeah. Information yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get Roy in could I just ask Tom to give any information on what their vote was on Article 28, why they opposed it? I could just wait for them to get back. Yeah, what, 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 yeah they'll be in. Yeah, well, they're here, so they can go on over. No, I, I don't. It will look no different. You think? There's a lot of misinformation being spread about that. We don't have a short term rental that can be subject to any taxes. Waiting for Roy. Um, we got to sign the discharge of mortgage. You want to explain that as a second time? Uh, yeah. Jan has um, recommended that. Yeah, yeah. Getting ready to sell. The town has a, uh, a mortgage from a, a loan that we uh, gave earlier. It's a, one of these sort of permanent no interest loans, but it goes clean against your house if you don't pay it back. So now is the time for us to get it back. Okay. And Jan recommended this. Yeah, oh yes. We now own the property. He's passed away, right? No, no. We just have a, we just have this lien on it. We just have the lien on it. Has he passed away? It's been paid off. Or a mortgage. No. 
if we close? No, that's the point. This is a long-term loan, more or less. And often elderly people will do that. It's they don't have the No, it's a good thing the town to, does. Yeah. How much is the mortgage for? I don't know. But that, that doesn't say. It's just the uh, release of the mortgage? Yeah. Uh, typically, they're about $30,000, whether it's rehab or septic. Does this have to be done tonight? Uh, there, it needs to be done in order for them to move forward with what they're doing with the house. So I would say so it would help if it were done. I personally am okay with the recommendation of our treasurer saying to do it. If Jan says it, she, it's, it's okay with me. And this is for work on the, on the septic? I'm not sure whether it was septic or rehab. It could have been, it could have been either but certainly maintaining the condition of the property. Okay. All right. All right, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the satisfaction of mortgage uh, for the property uh, described in the uh, Franklin County Registry of Deeds is in book 5840, page 117. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay, we have uh, a letter uh, to uh, Secretary Beaton for uh, support of the, uh, the Mohawk Trails Woodland Partnership. This is formal notification based on the vote taken a few weeks ago. Yeah. All right, so we're just, just notifying him of our support. Do have a second to sign this? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're ready for the Finance Committee. Gentlemen. So, uh, Mr. Chair, it, uh, it might make sense to have the Highway Department, is the, the, their, their warrants, yeah. their revisions to the warrant article. The, yeah, they're, um, they're going to be here too. Yeah. But yeah. If, if they're going over what articles you approve of and what you don't, there's, yeah, they're, there's they're new language. Right. Maybe they can go first. Yeah, they're right. They're right. They're right. Come step up to the table. Come on. Peter, Walter, you guys, come on. Where do we sit? Yeah, let's choose this right there. How are you, Peter? I'm well. And yourself, sir? Wonderful. Walter, thanks for being here. You had a meeting this afternoon. You have some recommendations for us? We do. Okay. We have we voted on and we have some proposed verbiage for the water. You got yours. Oh, you did. I emailed to you. you, you oh, over there is important.
Well, you want to, you want to go over the process you went through to come up with these? Right. Well, as, as some of you know, we're um, a lot of the damages to breaking the overall project into two separate buildings. Um, uh, one very big reason is that we have a uh, estimate for the maintenance building, a rough estimate of one million, about one million two hundred thousand dollars. If we could keep it under one million five hundred thousand dollars, we do not have to go through uh, as much procurement rigmarole as we would have to if it's over a million and a half. Mm -hmm. If you're over a million and a half, you are required first to go out with an RFQ before a owner's project manager. The owner's project manager then helps you hire the uh, design team, as they call it, for which you would also have to do an RFQ. So there you're talking money and time. Um, but because of some design changes that we think are going to improve the building, and because we're splitting it, we can get under that million and a half in all probability, because we've got quite a cushion there. Um, right now, we've got $300,000 that we can come in under. And I spoke to the Attorney General's office, the woman who's in charge of the procurement department, and she said that if you have a good faith estimate that you're going to be less than a million and a half, that's all she cares about. How it actually comes in, how it's actually bid, and how it's actually even finished and invoiced is not relevant. Those are exact words. Not relevant. Mm -hmm. So that assuaged a big worry that we had yeah. on that score. So, two separate buildings. The coal storage building, that's a piece of cake to get under a million and a half. And we've got money in here for it, as you see, at 650, which we think is generous. Um, we think that's generous, conservative. We think we're being safe. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, in that uh, allocation, which I wrote down here, um, we are thinking that a large part of the building, uh, the, the coal storage building, is going to be site work. And Ron Sweet is willing to do that work with his crew. Um, if we pay them overtime, they're going to get 35 bucks an hour. The uh, prevailing wage rate is probably almost double that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to save a whole ton of money there mm -hmm. and probably get a, as good a job, in some ways maybe a better job. Ron's willing to get going this summer. So what we're trying to do now is fund that building so that he can get going, get the site work done by uh, early fall, at which point we should have all the bidding done for the contractors and have them go. And hopefully we get a better price because we're going and giving them work in the fall or even winter if they want it. If we were waiting for the spring to do this, then we're competing with everybody else. And already a lot of people um, are work that we found are working almost that far ahead next spring. So the next spring is going to be a little harder to get somebody and maybe more expensive. So that's our hope in doing this first building. Getting it done early is good because um, by next winter, if we can get those trucks under cover, we've got a lot of good things working for us. We're, we're not only saving maintenance by keeping them outside, but there's a big safety factor. Tom is 
made a strong point about how we need to be nervous about these guys crawling up and removing snow 10 feet off the ground on, on these trucks. And it's also cost them money to do that. So that's what we're thinking on that building. Ron has estimated $190,000 for the site work. And he's built into that uh, 70, what thousand to blast them? 70, uh, Seven. 70, 77. I think the 77,000 for the blasting. And uh, he has an interesting strategy there in that um, if, if he, uh, and as he hopes and he feels he can probably get it done for 50,000 or less, if he does that, he can get three estimates, hire someone and go. If it's more than 50,000, then he's got to go through the bid process. Going through the bid process, I've learned today, means that he hires a blaster, and no matter what that blaster hits on the ground, he's going to bill what he did. By doing it Ron's way, with an estimate, if, in fact, they don't hit as much ledge as they propose, and we're thinking we can save a lot mm -hmm. by, um, as I was explaining to you, I was telling you, Tom, a minute ago about how, yeah, you were saying how we can pin to ledge and we don't have to go so deep. In that case, um, the blaster would only charge us for work as done. So it could, could you know, maybe the numbers would be something like the blasting cost 40000 going that way. If we went out to bid and had firm bids, they might come in at 70. I think last time they came in at um, Maybe I'm wasting your time. You don't have to know this. So a bit that high will be to be very substantially more less time. Yeah, and right. it'll be to be very conservative because they're going to be stuck with it. Right. That's right. Uh -huh. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that's, right. well, I, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. That's what I thought. But yeah. Right. That makes so, sense. So um, Ron is figuring on that amount of blasting and a total of 190 thousand for his work, and he feels he's being real safe in that. The design fee from David Vreeland and John Wyman in Shelburne Falls is $7,000, as opposed to a whole lot more last time around. Hmm. But the nice thing is, we are making use of all that work that was done by Reinhardt Associates. Um, the plans. The everything. plans and specifications mm -hmm. for which the town spent $108,000. That is going to be recycled because these guys are coming in at very reasonable design fees because we have that to go on. So we're not throwing that out. Um, and the building itself, we are thinking will be in the neighborhood of $425,000. We put in a contingency fee of almost 30,000, coming up with the 650,000. Now this number could change as soon as um, the end of the week. Change down. Um, I mean, I suppose it could change up, but we're pretty confident it won't. Um, but I think by town meeting, we will have firm estimates and be maybe, maybe well on the road to going out for bid by town meeting. Mm -hmm. What's um, the contingency? The contingency is 28000 But there's conti that's just on the building part. Because Ron has built in a lot of contingency in this 190. Mm -hmm. And the uh, design fee is, is set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we got a confirmation email today on the design fee of 7000 mm -hmm. And as I was telling Tom uh, and Alan, the $7,000 is not just the design of the building, because this design is very simple. 
and so much of it was done before. We're hardly changing that building. The, um, a lot of that $7,000 is going to be supervision. He's going to be there doing supervision of the site during the construction process, and even during Ron's uh, site work. He, David has been to the site already. I, just to be full disclosure, David really was a former business partner of mine and a longtime friend, and lots of people in town have actually worked with David and know David to be impeccable. And the building inspector, when he has a question about code and structure, often calls him up. So he's, he's beyond reproach. Yeah. And to give you some context about the, the, the design, we originally contacted the uh, architect, uh, McMillan, uh, about perhaps having, using him to rework the plans. Mm -hmm. And he gave us a fee of uh, just to redesign the existing plan, not redesign them, but bring them up to current code and restamp them uh, for both the uh, coal storage building and the maintenance facility of $48,000 plus bidding and construction administration of $73,000 for a total of about, what was that, $122,000. Whereas David, as you'll see in the next article, uh, David and John would do the design work and the bidding for the maintenance facility for $29,200 plus this $7,000 figure. So you're talking under $40,000 for something that was going to cost you well over $100,000. Um, so <laughs> how's that possible? How's that possible? Oh, yeah. by, rolling, no, no. by rolling up their sleeves yeah. and, and here's just here, 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 here are some of the ways. Here are some of the ways it's possible. If I could read this off, yeah. Walter is first of all. Walter's done a, a lot of legwork, calling the secretary, calling these people to find out what exactly uh, has was required. And the last building committee was actually given a lot of misinformation such as, one, you couldn't split the project. Well, we learned we could. Uh, Walter learned that. Um, and we're going to be using the existing site plan. The, the, the building inspector has no problem with us using the existing site plan just as it is without any changes. We don't have to do any changes to that. The septic system is OK. We don't have to do any changes to that. The build, previous building committee was told that you could not pour directly on the ledge. But in fact, you can. So the building inspector said, that's not a problem. David Whelan mm -hmm. says, that's not a problem, mm -hmm. which saves you additional blasting and not having, so there'll be no blasting actually for the maintenance facility, only for the uh, cold storage. Building. I think that was part of it being a critical facility. Yeah, and it's not a critical facility. It doesn't have to be a critical facility and, and have higher construction standards, which can saves money, considerable amount mm -hmm. of money. Um, and. Um, Let's see, and, and the requ no requirement for an OPM, which is huge. The building's already designed. We don't need any help designing the building. We don't need any help finding a designer. We, we know how to do that. We've done that. So those are some of the reasons why. And, and David lives in town. I mean, he lives, you know, David, John lives in Shelton Falls. David lives in, in Leiden. They do a lot of local work. They're local, and they care about the communities. So, so that's some of the reasons. Mm -hmm. I have a question. What's the uh, footprint? How many square foot is this building? Two buildings. The, the no, cold I mean, storage. The, the cold storage. Cold storage is 7,500 square feet. So it's 50 it's, by 150. And um, it's about 53 dollars a square foot. Yeah, 53 dollars a square foot. Okay. And so the, the the number that you got from Ron is to is to uh, make it. Uh, Flat, dig down for the footings, and, but doesn't include the concrete. That's right. That's correct. Concrete's part of the building cost. Mm -hmm. And the, I'm just, I, I assume you guys weren't on the garage, the garage committee three, four years ago. I mean, how could they be given such bad information? People don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> well, they went through, uh, in their defense, they went through a regular process. They, they did the OPM, they hired the, the, the architect, they were, they were big firms, mm -hmm. and they followed um, the way a lot of buildings are designed. And, and uh, I visited the Ashfield facility this past week. It's very nice, mm -hmm. 
but it cost 2.2 million, I was uh -huh. told, 14 years ago. So uh -huh. that's probably a $4 million uh -huh. building. Um, the people in Buckland, 2.5 million, I believe. Um, and that went through the, well, that wasn't even quite the regular process because they didn't get an OPM. Uh -huh. They may have to now, but uh, yeah, they, they're, they're getting less building than we are. Wow. Um, so they're just different ways to go about it. And, and we learned a lot. The, the, the prior committee learned a lot, mm -hmm. and we leaned on a lot of the stuff yeah. that they learned and then could, as a committee again, could build off of their, their experience in the past. So, you know, it was, it was a lot of already, uh, a lot of groundwork was laid. So they were just taking things, in other words, they never got to the part where, well, what if we were going to go out and, you know, coordinate things in a sense. It was like they were going to hire a general contractor to basically do the whole business. Is that the approach they were taking? I, they were I, going big time with yeah. big, um, well, not a big architecture firm, but a convention architecture firm. firm. The uh, OPM company, uh, Diversified, good, good company, but they are in Boston. So to come out here, yeah, they, they were proposing 1,600 hours yeah. of work. Yeah. Plus, they're not using prevailing wage, too. They we're not using prevailing wage, they were using prevailing wage. For, well, for at least for the... We uh, have to use prevailing wage. Go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. You know better than I do. For, because of Ron, we will have to use prevailing wage right. there. For, However, the contractor will have to use prevailing wage. Mm -hmm. Prevailing right. wage, and that will go out to bid, uh -huh. same same uh -huh. as last time. Uh -huh. And and it's a uh, it's a metal building. Uh, no? Metal right. sheath, probably. Yeah. Um, wood frame, probably. Um, for a bunch of reasons, um, I was. Uh, first uh, told about the advantages of a metal frame by the guy who specified and built or ordered the buildings for the three county fairgrounds. They have three big wood frame buildings there. You meant, you meant, you said metal frame, but you mean wood frame. Wood frame. I meant wood frame. Yeah. But they were put out either way. They can, the, uh, and, and they got bids back, and the wood was much cheaper. Mm -hmm. They're very happy with it, and, and part of the reason they're happy is the uh, contractor in Westfield called Kurtz Construction. They're uh, the agents for Lester Buildings. Lester Buildings is similar to Morton Buildings, mm -hmm. and uh, everything we've heard about them has been great without exception, and this, the guy at the Free County programs thought they were great as well. David has a relationship with them. So this is all helping us. This is going to help us get, hopefully, um, more accurate estimates by the end of this coming week, as opposed to going a month or two, going through more formal. It's called, originally, the original building was supposed to be a pole building, originally. A, a real pole building. That's how it was built out, I think. Or maybe it wasn't. But this is called a post-frame building, so they don't actually put the poles yeah. into the ground. Yeah. They're laminated timbers that so come up, and then they're bolted right. to a concrete foundation yeah. or piers in the yeah. way that separate the doors. And um, the de David Vreeland, the engineer, says that the detailing is much simpler um, and less expensive, and you don't have the issues with condensation that you might with a metal frame mm -hmm. building. And it's a trust. trust the roof trusses will be standard roof trusses. Mm -hmm. this, being 50 feet. And this would include also a completely enclosed building with big, 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 large pairs. Ten inches. Ten inches. Everybody in the bridge? Yeah, yes. Everybody gets their own remote, is that it? Pardon? You want to get their own remote? Is it on door? Is that it? I can have six or seven. It's going to be a I was all for no doors at all, but. Ron and, and Ken were met, field doors are quite necessary yeah. for security and safety, yeah, I guess it makes kids sense. being there yeah. and so forth. Hey. Uh, well, the stuff's, out, the stuff's out just sitting outside now, does it get handled, hassled now? Apparently it does, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they do.
Buckland trying to steal it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> we haven't set up a camera there yet to catch them, you know, so yeah. we do one of these cameras up there. What about uh, fire insurance on the wood framing versus the metal framing? Mm -hmm. I think it might be less. Apparently, uh, wooden structures, um, Tom knows, they're not good, but they are the sticks. sticks take a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they take a while. Yeah. Here's a classic yeah, picture of a, of a of a wooden girder uh -huh. and then a steel beam melted over it in yeah, a small yeah, fire. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah, steel beam yeah. just collapsed and the wood girder stays strong. And once the steel is off of this way, it's no good anyway. The big thing with the fire would be the trusses. But yeah. either building you do is the trusses. That's right. true. Fire all the staples, boom, things expand and all of a sudden the trusses, yeah. that's all yeah. together. This uh, comes with a metal roof. Yeah. And uh, all right. They warrant how long is it warranty? Is there a warranty in this at all? Well, it depends, I think, on the company we, we yeah. talked to. I okay. think that um, Lester, I asked, but no, I, 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 I think, I think 25 years is typical. Yeah, I would think. And I think it's the same roof, whether we do a metal building or a wood building. Okay. I think no matter what, it's a 25-year metal building. Like the school. That's what they guarantee, whether the paint stays on or not. Right. They tell you 25 years. That's what they say. <laughs> the, the, just the, the couple, I've, been, I've, I've tried to go to most of their meetings because I spoke critically about this project in the September thing, and I thought I sort of owed it to give an effort to convey some of the things that I'd like to see so that I could get behind it. Um, and, um, you know, to, from a top line, like total dollar amount level, you're talking about saving somewhere between a half million and a million overall mm -hmm. on this entire project mm -hmm. um, from what it was before, which is just amazing to me. Um, and and th the way that they went about this, I just love, you know, this is sort of a gold standard for a process for a committee from now on. Just not taking anything for granted, not, not taking any assumption as like, uh, and just taking every goal that you want, breaking it down into the constituent elements and going after each one to see where you can get savings after it. Are you talking and about the school budget? I wish. <laughs> I wish. Um, this one did. Uh, that, that was cute. That was cute. Um, <laughs> no, that, that was real. Uh, that was real. That is. Two thirds of the dough for tonight. That's what we're talking about. Uh, we'll get to that next. Let me think. But, but um, you know, the. And, and as uh, over the months of these meetings, as each sort of problem was solved, and it, 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 every single one like broke in favor of this project, there wasn't like a single thing that they looked at and uh, the, to do that ended up costing more than it was before. It, it just, um, you know, they they really have worked this as hard as it can be worked, and um, so I mean, just from the pro, you know, you, you can still say. You know, as I've heard people say, those people signed up for that job knowing that garage was the way it was, you know, and they're against the garage. But in terms of like process, this is like, this is as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, we take away 10 doors and get better. Yeah. <laughs> what do you put in the place? Huh? What do you, if you don't have doors, what do you have? Just open them. Just open them. Just open them. Yeah. Trim style, so maybe if I use the equipment and go in and Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, boy. I couldn't help it. You should. <laughs> Does the, do you have anything else, Walter? Or, yeah. Okay. None. So you'll have quotes probably, you're hoping to have quotes within the next month. Is that for. Uh, your I think by town meeting we'll have a very good number okay. to confirm this 650. Um, the other one. The strategy there uh -huh. is to get the design, which is half the sixty thousand. Mm -hmm. The other half of the sixty thousand is because Ron may need to do some site work for that building. For example, if he has to bring a water line from the well over to the to be built maintenance building, that's got that may take some blasting. Any blasting wants to be done. First. Prior. Huh? Prior, absolutely. So he just wanted to put some money in in case he has to do some work is over there. Is there any issue tapping into the. We're not going to tap into that. There's a big issue if you mess with that. That's what I'm saying. There's another well over there. 
Oh, two wells. Oh, there are two oh. wells. So the idea is to use the unused well, yeah. which he said he had tested, and it yielded 17 gallons a minute. Oh, right. And there's even a pump down in that well oh, right good. now. So you can wash the truck? Where's, yeah, where's that well from? When did that happen? Do you know? I don't know. When did what happen? The, the well, well dug two wells. I'm guessing they were for the school. Yeah, I think, I think the first, the first the, one was for the school, oh, and somehow it, it didn't test oh. strong. I mean, it was I mean, because the 17, 17 gallons is a lot. I mean, that's pretty that was, I think what they did is they, when they blasted for the school, it shifted all the rock around. <laughs> <and> yeah, oh. <laughs> no, the one that the school uses is five gallons a minute. <laughs> Really? And that's a public water supply. Wow, and that was the second well drilled. I, I don't know. You know what I, I mean? know nothing yeah. about it. I but but that. but yeah, I mean that's that's not it's not the highway wherever you use the well that's not being used. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who does well, the inspection? Should be good. Is the regional council, the government, who does who does who does the inspection? Who actually comes and do the inspection work? Of the yeah. the public water. So now the water of the construction. Oh, the garage, cold storage facility. David Reland, who is the licensed engineer, uh -huh. is, and it's called controlled construction. Uh -huh. So as part of controlled construction, he needs to license. sign off on, on the paperwork uh -huh. as it moves along. Uh -huh. the, engineer the, most critical, the most critical piece. So the engineer piece. supersedes the, uh, the regional council of the government's running the building yeah, yeah. inspector. Okay. Yeah. All right. As I said, okay. the, the yes. building inspector often calls David up for answers. Okay. So. They don't supersede the building inspector. The building oh. inspector has full authority, yes. in my understanding. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. But he's under his license, he has professional liability and all that kind of thing. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Usually, yeah, if there's a light stamp there, then yeah. the building inspector right. steps aside. That's good. Yeah, and David, Thank you. you know, David washes it. Yeah, makes yeah. it. The most critical thing with this is is the foundation and, and the steel uh, in the in the footings yeah. and in the, yeah, yeah, in the foundation yeah. walls. Sure. Yeah. But I don't think the building inspector will really step aside too much in view of the fact that even though David stamped and designed it, yeah. David uh, isn't the guy replacing the rebar. Mm -hmm. He's right. not the guy yeah. putting in the hurricane clips. Right. Right. So the the guy's still going to be there, and the mm -hmm. electrical inspector is still going to want to be yeah. there. Oh, yeah. To see yeah, if the, the contractor wants all that stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Those numbers you gave us are way under the six, 650, though. Uh, I mean, you, no. you you didn't say them all. I don't know. but 197, 425, and 28. Right. Yeah, that's it. I think you can do it on that. What was 425? The building. The building, the building. The building. yeah. Minor point. 425. 190. 190. Is site prep. It's a 650. The, yeah, uh, okay. The other, the small well, number was the design. Why are you saying you think there's a chance the cost could go down? It could be gold. I mean, it could go up. Right? I think it could go up. I Ron feels he's see. got a big cushion in his. Oh, when in his 190. Right? He's built a lot into that. Wow. Seven is firm. Yeah, yeah. The 28 is contingency. And the 425 um, compares to last time building of 360 something. Oh, so, that a bit. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I see. So that's what you're saying. So, so based on. A fair increase from the last one, mm -hmm. even though we think we're going to be, we have a design that's right. going to be a little cheaper. Yeah, yeah, a little more. Um, we are going to throw a few more things in. For example, um, probably we'll be able to afford a con concrete coming up above the slab to protect the building from trucks and storage stuff and mm -hmm. and, 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 and mm -hmm. so forth. And, and last time around, I don't think that was part of it. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to get a little more for our money. And, and, oh, they, we should actually know by the end of the week um, how close we are with this number. David is going to talk to Kurtz, yeah. okay. construction, who do these buildings a lot. Mm -hmm. They have the plans, mm -hmm. and the, the, and they're going to talk to David about what they think a, a reasonable price for this yeah, building yeah, yeah. is. So, we we might know by by Friday or Monday uh, even a better number. Oh, good. Thank you. Our plans have gone out to Kurtz, and Kurtz in turn has given them to Lester, the awesome. engineering department. Awesome. So things are moving. Awesome. Awesome. And David has done work already for free. Like I said, he came out, he came to our, one of our meetings, he came out to the site visit with, with Ron just to look at the ledge yeah, and, okay. and look at, he wanted to see how the uh, existing uh, site plan 
really met up with the with the uh, with the lay of the land, and uh, so he's done work already. Mm -hmm. I have the last thought, maybe. First of all, thank you very much. Yeah, I, thank you. Thank I'm, you. Sure, I'm sure the town will thank you. Let's see about that. We got a lot of work to do. No, yeah, 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 a long, long way to go. Long way to go. Did you have a public, have a public meeting? I mean, other other than the garage committee meeting? That's how we do here. No, we will want to do that before the town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So I. Uh, yeah, my last question is, what's the siting of the whole barn? Is it sited in a way that solar panels could go on the roof? On the roof? Yeah. At some it point in time? I Actual have prints in my car. Um, it's, it, 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 it faces, it, you know, the length, the long axis faces probably, I think, a little bit in, uh, southwest a little bit. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. right. I understand it's not uh, a large amount of money to make the... Uh, Roof supports uh, sufficient to deal with solar panels. And actually, most roofs don't need to be reinforced at all. Yeah. As having climbed up on a lot of roofs for Northeast Solar, mm -hmm. and, and David has done a lot of a lot of engineering work for solar panels. If you build a building to code, the, the extra weight of a solar panel per square foot is not much, not much at all. Any other questions for finance? Nope. Any questions? Great. No. All right, no questions on the articles themselves? Is everybody's happy with them? Yeah, Okay. Yeah. You guys have a recommendation on these articles? On these articles here. Seven and eight? Seven and eight. Yeah. Does that replace seven and eight in here? Yeah, to replace the seven and eight that are in there now. Yeah. Yeah. 18 million copies here. So, all of that. All of that. So, yeah. Do you want a formal vote taken right now? You take, a, take a vote. All right. Give us your recommendation. So the new articles, 7 8. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? We did see it. You've got to put it over in a second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Any abstentions? You want to abstain too? No? Can you vote and abstain? No, I can't do that. So all the answers are favor. That's presented. You have three, 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 zero, three zero on both? Right. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll make a recommendation that we um, support both of these articles uh, the way they're written. Yeah. Do I have a second on both? Second. Yeah. Second. Okay. 3-0 on both. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your work. It's not the way you voted before. Okay. I'll do more. Do you mean for tomorrow still scheduled? Or was that postponed? There was a meeting for tomorrow. I didn't know. Uh, so we need to schedule for tomorrow. That was scheduled last week before they scheduled. Yeah, 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 before so, so you think, Alan, yes. for, for Article 3, you guys still have no recommendation? Oh, okay. The issue, you want me to speak on this? Since I'm going to go ahead. The issue we were having on here uh, was... Oh, it was again, it was the issue of the uh, quotes. You have quotes or estimates. How firm are they for the. Uh, and it was also, board. because this isn't built into the school budget per se. Right, well, this is the list. Yeah. What, happens, uh, this, what happens if next year, so we vote this, but what happens if two years from now, one of, the, one of the towns says, we don't feel like paying? Is this possible? Can it happen? Um, if the, the uh, this uh, article and, and anything related to capital expenditures for Frontier, because it's not contained in our four town operating uh -huh. agreement, must be voted on unanimously at town meeting by all four okay. towns. Okay, yeah. so that's a stipulation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then I got that okay. go, okay. binding for the rest of the uh, life of the borrowing, is that it? Well, it's got to be voted um, every year, right? Yes, yeah. right. This is our share. Right. This is our share. Right. But okay, so, so that's what Roy's saying. Three years in, if it's yeah. going to be voted every year, three years in, eh, we don't want to do that. Well, then nobody will do it. Right. right. Well, it, I mean, no, this, this year right. is the big hurdle. This year is well, is voting to um, uh, to 
borrow basically we wouldn't be borrowing as, as a town but the regional would be borrowing a one-year note to fund the, the renovation of the track and that's the big expense so this year is the big number um, next year is almost as big but then it falls off a cliff for the years three to ten okay and so it's more of like the ordinary capital stuff of so the group. these are one-year notes these are all one-year notes oh, right. to specific Projects yes. or oh, correct. Right. So, yes. Okay, so that's changed from the November presentation, or October presentation. They were talking about bonding, multi-year borrowings, and all that. Yeah, the the, um, the 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 our the consultant is Joe Marquisian from Furcog. Marquero, I'm sorry, I get the names terrible. Um, but and the his analysis was that the one-year note is by what the way to go for many different reasons. Yeah, but, borrowing costs are lower. Fulfill the thirty-seven there for the payment. The town share, right? Does that reflect the thirteen more kids they found down at the high school? It does. Okay. All right. No, it's a good question. Yeah. Why? Because I was thinking about well, this one more accurately. No, no. Those yeah, those numbers are locked in as of October one every so year. What's that percentage of the school down there? Eleven uh, percent, twelve percent. I think sixteen point three or something uh, this year. Sixteen point three. Sixteen point five. Sixteen point six. Mm -hmm. Really that high? Well, it was 12 7 or something like that. Well, you had 13 kids. Yeah. No, no, we, we haven't gone below 14 in like 10 years, oh, and we haven't gone above 17 in like 10 years. So, okay. we, those, but we're at our. Wow, lucky us. So, we should vote on this. So, we're up. Yeah. Article three. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Yeah, it was three zero. Uh, article five is no longer there. Yeah. Articles four and five are no longer there. Right, four and five are no longer there. So we and if go. I could just explain that the no, um, they go. the um <laughs> the the capital expenses are going to be grant funded this year. Uh -huh. Okay, you mentioned that last week. Right, oh. so they're they're reasonably confident enough about that that they no longer wish to present an article for it. Really? Hmm. Um, and for that reason, uh, you may recall that we had achieved our goal of the Grammar School Capital Stabilization Fund. The amount was was the goal that we had set up seven or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so, because we're not going to be taking anything out of there, we don't we don't. I mean, we're at our goal. We, there's no reason to add something to it, and that money can be more properly thought of as being applied to Article Three in some sense. But um, where are we to carry? Where, where are the grants the grammar grammar school? school? You know where the, the source grant the grants are? Um, it's a state federal uh, wow. the security oh, whatever. Wow. I mean, Homeland Security or something. I mean, they took they took twice as much from us on transportation as they're well, three yeah. times as much from us uh -huh. on transportation as they're giving back to us and. Right. Security, security, but uh, so armed, armed security guards, that kind of thing. That's good. No, no, like pa uh, the pass is going away from locks and going towards pass keys that you yeah, can pass that digitally record the time stamp who's coming in and out. Okay, drone. Yeah, you're drawing out in the back. Okay, how about Article 12? What's your? Um, you have no recommendation on that. Article 12. Oh, boy. <laughs> bless you. God bless. You. Article 12 is in the, uh, in the excavator. So we, there was a lot of leeway. Looking at my notes from when Ron presented back in uh, on February, I think it was 21st, that uh, there was still no decision on the price of what he was looking at and what the trading value was. It was like a, uh, there was like leeway of $40,000. Mm -hmm. Has Juan got many? Uh, at the time, he didn't have an actual uh, quote. Did he has, has he done any more work on that? Do you know, Tom? I think he's confident that that figure would be sufficient with the trade-in for him to get a new mini excavator. Uh -huh. And it, but it it depends on the market at the time of trading it in. Yeah. So one of the questions was, last year there was money appropriated to buy the small tractor, oh, and we went to go buy it. It was ended up being short. So yeah, it cost short more. six grand. Right, six grand. And so yeah. some of these yeah. things, it's like, well, twenty thousand for this plus the trade didn't get you that, but it's like, well, that didn't work last year. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like taking a flyer. I'm you know, sure. I'm sure he'd be he'd be happy if you uh, 
uh, if he voted more money. But again, yeah, well, he, I mean, uh, if he goes the other way, he, um, <coughs> let's make let's have this thing go eight years instead of coming in at five. Tom, um, it, are we any closer to having Ron fill out some actual forms? I'm hoping that can happen them? through the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Because with those could be made available at Town yes. yes, yes, that is a function of the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Yeah. And yeah. we actually have someone who has, who has some of those forms who may be interested in participating. That's good. Yeah, because this, in terms of discussion at town meeting, was last year we deliberated the election time. I thought needlessly I mean, because there was no looking at you. Well, I want to Yes, I understand. All right, so you're, right. Stay, you're staying with no recommendation. That's correct. Well, Let's keep. Yeah, we want to hear what Mr. Okay. Sweet has to say okay. at town meeting. How about 17? You're free to uh, it's a ask the highway supervisor to meet with you and explain together. his latest thinking uh, at any time. But you know, between the proper forms and then an explanation at a town meeting, it, it, you know, if the ducks are in a row, nobody can really argue other than... Absolutely. You know, maybe Absolutely. I, I'm fully in favor of, yeah, yeah. of that. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, I think on 17, it's about it's. It was more or less the same issues yes, as was. we had. Yes. All right. So 17 and 18 are the same issue. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, se for me, 17. No, 17. I agree with Dino on that capital committee deal. You know, 350 four door pickup truck. You know, for maybe going three times to somewhere, you might need the crew. Seem like you know you could pile into two cars and go somewhere for a safety thing. Mm -hmm. It just it, it just seemed to me that you know a single cab with an eight foot bed should be fine. But I can tell you, Ron's argument is that he has a lot of stuff that he stores in the back of yeah. his pickup that he carries with him all the time. Yeah, I and got the same thing. I, if I pick up a hitchhiker, man, I got to hold the front seat out of the way and get him to sit down in there. I understand what happens in a pickup truck. All right. So, so you we have a question. Does Ron? For I still you, don't think it's necessary. Does, does Ron Sweet have a particular make and model? Because Latin, we were actually. He didn't when we had the discussion. It was actually on February 11th when he. No, no. He wants the same thing. Same truck. So he wants to dive 3,500. Yeah. With the double cab. Right. Not a cab extended in a double cab. Right. All right. So, I mean, that for me on that issue, on that question, that's my take. I think a regular cab with a pickup truck is fine. Do you know, does Ron plow with that rascal? The Dodge 350? Um, I don't think I've seen I think he uses one, one of the I'm big trucks. Sure. Huh? I think he uses one of the big trucks. I'm not sure. He has, the laborer uses one of the Uses a but different saying, vehicle, and I'm not sure which one. The Dodge is rigged up for plowing. I don't think it is, so even more so. You know, I just. Do you know how many miles are on that rascal? I don't know that offhand. Okay, yeah, yeah. Those are good questions I probably have for Tom, Rhonda and Ann. I'll, say, I'll send an email to him. I suggest they have information at town meeting. All right, so for right now, you stay on no, no recommendation. recommendation. Okay. Yeah, no. How about uh, 28? What's happening with, uh, or wait, 19? Yeah, you've got a 19. month to make a recommendation What's happening with 19? on these yeah. if you want to make one. Town meeting. That's the lift, right? They had a recommendation. Still not. That's the lift, yeah. What's, What's the lift? lift? Our thought is, let's for this building, correct? Yeah. 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 This building is economically obsolete to make it ADA compliant, to make it all, I mean, the bathrooms upstairs, it'll still open up. It's like a string, one thing to another. How old is this building? What year approximately was it was constructed originally? 1950, wasn't it? Yeah, about okay. 1950. Yeah, the, the overall plan is to renovate this building into offices at some point because that building cannot function as oh, a sure. municipal building because if, if this absolutely. building looks non compliant, <laughs> that building that is building never, never going to be. And never the grandfather will never be. going to be compliant. So. Yeah. That's why I thought that yeah. one thing leading to another was the best way to approach yeah. this project, yeah. rather than one big renovation project, do, do it one piece at a time. And making the upstairs accessible would take out the major cost yeah. of renovating this building. All right, so basically you're- So what's you're, the big picture for this building then? I mean, what, what, like, what's the, how does you want to, when it's, oh, what, what's the overall Actually, deal? Peter, you, Peter drew up a conceptual design some years ago. Oh. And, and, and there are offices and meeting spaces. They're uh -huh. arranged somewhat differently. Uh -huh. 
Um, but uh, the idea is to make the spaces that are most accessible, that room and this room, into the offices that are visited most frequently by people who come into the town offices, right. which is the tax collector, the treasurer, the town clerk. Right. Um, so the upstairs would be subdivided into a meeting rooms, not used as an open uh, and, space. And offices. So the upstairs? No more, no more Halloween costumes show upstairs in the future would be a Conley Grammar, or is that? No, the rack and sack's always got to be downtown. <laughs> so we're going to hold the costume for it then, on the roof? Sorry, we hadn't thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, you guys are satisfied with all the rest of your recommendations? 28. Yes. Okay. What about 28? What was up with that? Yeah, non-tax revenue. Yeah, what, I thought you yeah, guys be all over non-tax revenue. Uh, non-resident non 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 revenue. Our, 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 it's too little to make a fuss about. Yes. And we'd rather not make the fuss on the side of not another tax. You know, it's... Mm. it's that's, that's None of the Airbnbs are going to be taxed. Well, Airbnb, even, even regardless of this, oh, well, they so need to have four more units in order for them to be taxed. Right. Under four, only if they serve breakfast. No, if they're a B and B, they don't get taxed if they're three, two, or one units. But a bed and breakfast requires providing breakfast. So if it's just providing the house, they would be taxed. They're not a B and B. I could. I don't think so, but. Well, that, that was our thinking. Right, okay. you know. We went to the same meeting. I know. <laughs> I didn't okay. think that. I got a lot more excited about the main Poland Road project, you know, the, uh, the PV installation up there in terms of, uh, you know, a rather recording service of revenue, put it that way. Okay. Do you guys have any other questions on the on the warrant? Not really, no. Okay. Are we, are we invited back again? Are we yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. Now we see us ever again. I think we're done for this. Oh my goodness! Tell me, please. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> yeah, it, I it, guarantee one more time before that. Yeah. If you have any further recommendations yeah. to make or anything, you can always you. make them to town meeting. So, well, we, we, we might end up seeing meeting with Ron. Right? Yeah, well, I think we should. Well, so we, when did these? When did the? Because it's kind of hard. We had no. We voted in favor of the two hundred thousand dollar item. And we didn't have any, any thing on these lesser items, and that is because there just seemed to be too much, too much wheeling. We want to avoid the wheeling and dealing yeah. that raised so many people's dander, if yeah. you will. Um, that, that oh, was yeah, we're not done. <laughs> Sorry. Um, two, two things. First, to that point. Um, Yes, wheeling and dealing is not good. Uh, I have also had to comment, just so everybody hears this, that that we should include um, the disposition of the vehicles, of the old vehicles, in the same article that we have the new vehicles in. And um, you know, I I mean to talk with Ron about it. That, that that would be part of the motion. That would not be part of the article in any case. It would be part of the motion because the article should be as broad as possible. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, but um, if we, the, so the question is, um, speaking of the wheeling and dealing, what Ron does, he does so that the town gets the best value. So he may deal with it in one way if the town gets the best value that way, but if he doesn't think he's going to get enough trading it in, he might say, I think I can get more going to auction. Uh -huh. And that's, I am content to leave that to his expertise um, rather than lock the town into one way of dealing with it, which might not get the best price that, for the town. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So um, it, it is a bit of a, of a, a roll of the dice, well, yeah, but the, the bears. person who knows most about the value of the vehicles is Ron, and he knows when he's getting a good deal from a dealer, and he knows what the market is, so it might vary from when he from one month when he's trying to sell it to the next month, depending on the deal he gets from the dealer. I don't know, yeah, but then again, one of the articles on the warrant is six thousand bucks for more money for the oh, for the tractor to go buy it this year because it ended up short last year. Yeah. I suggest you ask him about that when you meet. Yeah, I guess with well, I'm just saying, and right, how we'll do that. Be, be, well, it would be easier to yeah, sell a little Ron, tractor than Ron is, the, Ron is the guy that knows best on this, and I think we give him yeah. you know, latitude. 
Before you guys leave, do you guys have a recommendation on the staff pay raises? No. Yeah, so um, yeah. just just to, just to okay. let you know, I thought it was already from the budget. Right. No, so it was, it, the, the, the idea was to to wait a week, and that maybe there'd be oh. clarity on the union negotiations. Oh. Unfortunately, after another week of union negotiations, oh. there is no more clarity whatsoever than there was well, one. Where, where, where are the two sides? All right, so you guys have no recommendation on two, two and a half, or three for the staff. I'd say two and a half. I'd say two and a half. Two and a, two and a half. Oh, we had two and a half. It has been two and a half thousand seven hundred dollars. We're talking about right, Tom. Are you all at two and a half? Hold on. Are you going to take a vote? I want to hear it, Tom. You you said fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars last month. Fourteen thousand five hundred sixty-six for a two and a half percent rise. How about for two? Eleven thousand six fifty-three for a two point zero percent rise. That's about a three thousand dollar difference. Same in the other direction. For for as as someone who is in some ways chief of staff, I can yeah. say um, that that's a cheap way to buy morale. Is to yes, yes, yes. Is, yes. Is to What's the? Uh, do you know what the cold is going to be for Social Security this year? It's two point nine percent. That's an outlier. That's a real outlier. Yeah, it was zero percent the year before. Yeah. Uh, are we, you guys going to give us a two and a half percent? You know, near a third of the town, sixty-five and older. Yeah. So, you know, four years at two and a half is 10%. You know, so four, you want, four years, you want to form a vote for me? Are you going to get it? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Hello. It's not. Hello. It's not. It's not. It's not. Hello. Are you guys going to give us a formal recommendation? You want a formal no. Vote? You're not. You're not going to give us a vote? I'm not. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We have a vote for the rest of the committee? I would vote. You two in favor. Of what? Two and a half percent. Two and a half. Okay. And that's your formal recommendation. Yeah, you, uh, and I'm saying that. Yeah, I guess that's called So two in favor, one abstention. Okay. okay. Thank you, John. Two and a half percent. Okay. Thank you for your so, help tonight. All right. Just well, they worked out well. No snowstorms this, this year. If you can find <laughs> pretty an amazing. example yeah. of another town's well-worded uh, and documented article for a piece of equipment similar to this, I think it would be helpful. Things okay. okay. will probably go better next year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, Thank you, gentlemen. That's good. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Same for me. Or Happy New Year. Okay. okay, gentlemen. Now we have to vote on the staff yeah, raise. Know. I'll make a recommendation yeah, that we um, take the first. recommendation yeah. of the yeah. finance yeah. committee and vote for yeah. two and a half percent yeah. raise. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's I'll second. How does these guys do? Do we have a vote? No, I want two. I want two percent. I made a motion for two and a half. Yeah. I, and we have a second. Yep. It's a valid motion and a valid second. That's right. That's actually valid. In favor. Aye. Aye. Not raising our Bill. Okay. Two to one in favor for two and a half. Tom, any items for the day? No. No. Do you have our update? That would be the end of the floor. Yep. Okay. When you need negotiations again, somebody else's turn. This is three in a row. Or is there for This is my fourth one overall. For committee news, uh, the company doing the solar field on Main Poland Road, Nexam, has asked for the agendas and minutes of the Conservation Commission during the time their project is being deliberated. This suggests they are not happy with the way the CONCOM is approaching their project and are searching for flaws in the process. I've spoken with the chair and have confidence that the CONCOM has been upholding the usual community standards and has in fact given more leeway to the company than has often been the case. In departmental news, we've received a high-risk culvert map from the FERCOG for use by our highway department and the multi-hazard mitigation plan update team. Would you, would you ask him? Uh, okay. uh, also, with this vendor warrant, we have closed out the escrow account for Tornado Mountain and Roaring Glen. Total charges for Tornado Mountain were $412 and for Roaring Glen, $299.50. $212.50. for Tornado Mountain. One condition of the FEMA grant for updating the multi-hazard mitigation plan is that we file quarterly reports. 
I filed the required report on time and look forward to another meeting or possibly two with the team to update our identification of hazards and their priorities. In other news, we have received a number of code books from the International Code Commission as a perquisite of membership. If anyone would like to look them over, they are in the bookcase behind Lisa's desk. Brightly uh, colored, so you can't see yeah, them. Oh yeah, very colorful. <laughs> Sounds like fascinating. Uh, I would like to remind you of the general mail folder in the uh, in the select board bucket there. Uh, in which I put less urgent and important items, which now include Comcast programming changes and Eversource's plans for clearing their right-of-way. Please browse the items anytime and let me know if you think any of the items in that folder should be elevated to a public reading. Uh, we have received a list of information requests from the Department of Public Utilities and proposed responses by our consultant with a very quick turnaround time. I received these too late to put on the agenda, but have reviewed them. I would be happy to show them to select board members individually over the next day or two and respond to our consultant if you're interested. This is about uh, the aggregation program for the town, electricity right. aggregation. I'll come in and take a look at this with you. Uh, uh, on a related note, Bob Armstrong has worked with Sunderland on a community survey regarding electricity preferences which I think uh, we'd have time for next week. We can talk about it. I think that, that the broker that we hired would prefer we kind of do it as a group and thinks it might be a little premature. Okay, okay. I'm happy to wait. Um, I have not yet received word back from KP Law regarding the 32B process and so have started sorting out the timeline and responsibilities. I believe I am behind. Uh, but I need information from the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust before I can send out the initial letter. Uh, so that's uh, a little note of things to come. Okay. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Do have any select board comments? No select board comments. Mail. Mail. Do you, Tom, do we have any mail? A couple pieces. A couple of pieces. Uh, there were some late concerns that came in regarding the uh, cultivation operation, the Roaring Glen cultivation operation. There are a couple of items on that, and there's uh, another piece of mail, too. I can't remember what it is. Right, yeah. Um, from the uh, Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Oh, yes. Uh, they do send us regular updates. Yeah, so, sometimes I, I put these in the back with the general mail. Uh, this one just notes that we have no outstanding loan applications and that we have uh, used our money very, very fully in helping uh, several Conway houses get uh, rehabilitated. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It, it is a revolving loan fund, so uh, when that money gets paid back, sometimes the money can go back to the town, and we did take advantage of that uh, recently, but uh, usually it goes back into the fund. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't think we have any announcements. Yeah, just one, the fourth, this Thursday, six o'clock at Frontier is the, um, the final approval of the building renovation issue. Um, and it's also your chance to meet your new finance director. Um, and th those names have been publicly revealed. The, well, I forget, I was just looking at the email for the woman's name. But um, she is the one that was the uh, campaign treasurer for Natalie Blaze. That's who we're, and she, we're, she, she's currently employed at, at Holyoke as the assistant finance director for their school district. So she's, and yeah, she, in Holyoke. Yes, and okay. she comes highly recommended by Tom Scanlon. Mm, okay. Okay. But, uh, your chance to meet her before, right. before we vote her in is this Thursday. It okay. Says. Vote her in. Right. Yeah. All right. Next meeting is uh, Monday the 8th uh, in the town office. Back to our normal location. Okay.